Hey YouTube, thanks for clicking on this video. So, for those of you who have been coming to my channel for a little bit now, you may have noticed something different already. I'm in a completely different room than the rest of my videos. And that is because I recently relocated from Arizona to California to start my new job. So the context for this video is that back in July, I was laid off uh, from my job as a product development engineer in big tech. And then two months into my search, I made a video detailing some of the struggles I was having finding a new job in tech. And that video uh, is my most viewed video on this channel to date. It's actually still getting views and attention as we speak probably. And I got a wide range of opinions. Some people were very supportive and helpful. Others of you, not so much at all. So I made that layoff video in early September. Two weeks following that video, I actually got a job offer and then I made another video talking about how I got a job offer in tech after a mass layoff. I'm guessing that many of you probably haven't seen that video because it only has 2,000 or so views compared to the 130,000 views that my layoff video has. So I actually still have comments to this day where people are going and being rude to me on the layoff video even though I already have a job now so it's kind of funny at this point. But anyways, in that video where I talked about landing a job after a mass layoff, I mentioned that there's some mistakes I made early on into my job search process that I probably could have avoided and would have saved me a lot of time and headache. So that's what this video is gonna be about today. I wanna share some of the mistakes that I made in my job search process so that hopefully those of you out there who are in the position that I was in a month ago can avoid doing these so that you can land your next tech job faster. So today in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what I did wrong in my tech job search and how I'd do it differently if I had to start over again. Let's get into it. So the first mistake I made during my job search was only using LeetCode to prepare for coding interviews. All right, LeetCode helps a bit. And of course, many companies today are still using the LeetCode format. So you're going to have to study some data structures and algorithms if you want to land a job as a software engineer or software QA engineer. But personally, I believe LeetCode doesn't really simulate a full interview and only helps a bit. That's where today's sponsor, AlgoMonster, comes in. AlgoMonster is the smartest way to prepare for coding interviews. It's built by engineers at Google, Meta, and other top tech companies who know exactly what interviewers are looking for. The platform teaches you through patterns and has a fully built out learning plan that combines both learning and practice. So you're not just memorizing solutions, you're actually understanding how to approach new problems. AlgoMonster also has a newly added practice section that unlike other coding platforms, actually helps you learn as you practice. It replicates a real interview more closely so you can build real confidence before the big day. Additionally, their platform includes flowcharts that help you visualize solution paths, reusable templates to guide your coding structure, and even a speedrun feature to sharpen your timing and problem solving under pressure. If you want to check it out for yourself, you can get 50% off when you sign up using the affiliate link in the description below. It's a great way to level up your interview prep and support my channel at the same time. Now back to the video. Now mistake number two, which is a mistake that I think a lot of people make when looking for a tech job based off the comments in my last video that were like, oh, a hundred applications in two months. You should be doing a hundred applications in one day. You're not trying. I actually think that that way of thinking is a huge mistake. So mistake number two is going for quantity of applications over quality. So let me tell you why I think that's a huge mistake and why I think it's a mistake that a lot of people tend to make. So back in like the 2018, 2019 timeframe when there was you know a huge demand for developers and not enough supply, companies were willing to hire somebody who didn't fit the exact job requirements, but they felt like they were trainable enough that they could get them up to speed. Nowadays, that is not the case, right? If you're gonna go apply to a software engineer job or a software QA job, or you know, systems engineer job, pretty much any job in tech now, it's gonna have 200 plus applications within an hour, especially if it's on a job board. That's just the reality of the situation. So when you go and you have a generic application and you don't tailor it to any job descriptions and you just blast it out blindly, spray and pray hope for the best, your chances of getting a callback are significantly diminished, right? Because 
if your application is okay, but you don't really meet the criteria exactly for this job, the chances of somebody else who applied who has a better application and a better resume than you is a lot higher. So most of the time your resume is just gonna go straight to the trash. So I think that it's really worth it to just slow down a little bit. Don't just blast out you know, low effort generic resumes and actually take the time to read the job descriptions, tweak your resume a little bit, write a cover letter, and be a little bit more of a competitive applicant for these jobs because in the reality of the situation is you need to prove why you are a better candidate for the job than the other 200 people who applied at the same time. So in the beginning of my job search, I was doing this probably the first 50 applications. I didn't change my resume at all, just sent out the same resume to every single one and hoped for the best. I didn't get a single call back on any of those first 50. It was all just straight rejections. So once I got to the 50th rejection or you know ghost or whatever, I decided that this method wasn't working and I needed to change it up a little bit. So I'm gonna show you the method that I used when I started applying to only one or two jobs per day and how that method worked out a lot better for me. It's a really easy method to do and probably a lot of you already do this, but basically I'm just using AI to my advantage here. So let's say I'm on LinkedIn and I come across this job at Western Alliance Bank and I think that's a good fit for me, right? So um, first thing that I'm gonna do before I do anything is verify that this job posting actually exists on their company website. I never apply through job boards um, because a lot of these postings are just sitting there and they're actually not real postings. So it's kind of not worth your time to apply on them. So first thing I'm going to do is just copy and paste the um, job title and then I'm going to go to their career website and see if the job posting exists. So I'm going to go to Western Alliance Bank and I'm assuming their careers page is going to be at the bottom. Yep. And then I'll go here. Paste in the job description. And this is a real posting, so that's a good sign. That means it's probably a real job. So then what I can do is I'm gonna take, I'm literally just gonna do this very simple thing. I'm just gonna copy the whole um, job description. I don't need the benefits or about the company or anything like that. And then I'm gonna go to an AI tool. I use ChatGPT, but you can do this with any tool. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna add in my base resume, right? And I'm gonna open it up and then say, um, uh, help me tweak my base, help me tweak my resume based off the contents of this job posting and literally i'm just going to paste it in and then it can use that my resume and then just target uh, my specific experience and change it based on that now i never just copy blindly copy directly what the ai gives me because first of all i'm not recommending to any of you that you lie here or put something in your resume that you don't actually have don't do that um that's just not a good idea and you're probably going to get caught if you do that and then it's going to hurt your reputation so just don't do that um just but look over it and then kind of compare and say like okay just what can it tweak at least a little bit so that it fits the posting right if i look here i'm sure there's things in here that i've done that i just don't have in my resume so like for example um, lucid visio these are like um, diagramming softwares or like flowchart software. I've used these tools before. I probably didn't put that in my resume. That's probably something you'd want to include, right? Because then it makes you look like you're a better fit for the role. Um, and then from here, what I would do is I would go back, I'd edit my resume with some of the changes that AI suggested. And then I would also ask it, okay, now based on, now based on, based on this, can you, also help me draft a cover letter for this posting. And then just let it write me a cover letter. And I, of course, I'm sure many of you are already doing this, but um, I would go, I would recommend going at least 
the little extra mile just to not make it look like you just copy pasted directly from AI, go back through and read it and make small changes um, so that it isn't just a direct copy paste. And this is why I say it, it it's worth it to just go for the little extra bit to get the quality over the quantity, right? You do this for every single posting and you're likely to start getting more callbacks. Once I started doing this in my uh, last 50 applications, that's actually when I got the, f the five callbacks that I had. So really my uh, response rate wasn't like a 2%, 2 it was actually you know, more closer to, to 10%. If you think that the first 50 applications when I just blasted out, I got nothing. But in the second 50, where I actually did some tailoring, I started to get more interest. Now, mistake number three that I see a lot of people make is not targeting a specific niche, okay? Software development is very broad. There is a lot of niches you can choose from, okay? You have cybersecurity, you have embedded, you have AI and machine learning, you have video game development, you have QA, you have DevOps, you have cloud, so many different niches. And in today's market, there is a plethora of supply. So you need to be a standout in your chosen niche, okay? If you wanna do just full stack generic software development, you can do that. That's probably, I'd say the most oversaturated choice at this point, because it's, you know, what all of us know and, and love, and that's how we got into coding, right? So we all started with full stack development. Um, I personally wouldn't go for that. For me, I had a test background prior to um, my current job, so that I wanted to stay in test. I like test, um, but the thing is, I couldn't show my work from my previous job in my GitHub, of course, because it's proprietary information. So I can't just put that out publicly in my GitHub and show my code. So um, what I did is I started only targeting QA automation roles and um, I needed to build a project to support me and, and demonstrate that I have these skills, right? So I went and I made a, a project. Um, if you watch my video that I posted, which probably none of you have seen because it only has like 100 views, um, I made a, a patient portal uh, test automation framework for OpenEMR and then I kind of used this as my selling point of my ability to do uh, QA and test automation and then I uh, rode on that and but just basically applied only to QA automation roles from that point forward. Um, Cause that's what I wanted to do, but your niche may be something different. Maybe you're into cybersecurity. Um, if that's the case, I would say go and learn about that specific niche and then target all your projects and um, your resume towards that specific niche only. Okay, don't just try to apply to a broad range of, of job postings because Again, everything is specialized now. You're gonna wanna pick one specialty and then make one or two projects to support you in that specialty and go with that. Now, mistake number four is one that nearly got me into trouble and that is not versioning your resumes. Now, this mistake matters less as far as getting to the interview, uh, but it matters as far as once you're in the interview, you wanna make sure you know what your resume said on it. Um, when they're actually going to interview you. At first, I was using like a Google Sheets method where I was tracking which company I applied to and when and whether or not I had heard back. But I was doing those resume tweaks as you saw and I wasn't keeping track of which resume I actually used to apply to that position. So the good news is, is that we're developers and we know how to use GitHub. So that is actually the perfect tool for keeping uh, versions of your resume. So for me personally, I got pretty sick of adding in every single uh, job manually line by line into a spreadsheet. So I actually built this uh, little Python tool to help me out with that where I connect to a SQLite database um, and then I just add in information as I apply into the database and then I can just export to um, an Excel spreadsheet that way and then I can also track everything in Git. So if I need to go back and, and see uh, which resume me that I use to apply to this job, I can just um, reference that between my uh, 
what it says in my spreadsheet versus what's in the GitHub repository. So I'll just show you the the, the script that I use, but um, I mean, this is a pretty easy thing to make. It took me probably like two hours to do. Um, I just made this little job search helper and it's just like a little menu based application. So I did things where I could just add my applications to the debate database, update them, list them, delete them, export them. And then I had, um, I actually used um, six and seven are just the prompts I was using to generate the cover, cover letter prompts and the resume tweaks. So um, if I click option three, for example, I have this uh, little table here that I can use. And as you can see, um, it'll tell me which resume I used for that one. So then I could uh, basically export this to a spreadsheet um, and then I could go back into uh, my GitHub and then reference. If I do end up getting to the interview, it's like, oh, well, it says this in your resume. Now I know which resume I applied to for that job. So I would be very careful um, about this just because if you do end up in a situation where you're in an interview and you don't know what's on your resume, it can be embarrassing. So make sure you keep track of that. Now, last but not least, mistake number five, is not having a portfolio. Now, if you treat applying to jobs through the lens of trying to sell yourself to an employer, you wanna make sure that all your information about yourself that you wanna to portray to that employer is easily accessible, and a developer portfolio is the best way to do that. Now, for me personally, I used GitHub pages to host my portfolio, um, and I didn't really do anything too fancy. All right, I just made like this basic cube using 3JS that you can click on any of the faces of the cube or spin it around. It's a little cool visual, but it links to all my all my uh, socials and uh, contact information and my resume, depending on which face you click. So like here, it'll take you to my LinkedIn. Um, you go here, it takes me to my YouTube page. Um, and then here you can go to my GitHub things like that. I also left a nav bar in case, you know, someone doesn't want to play with the, the cube. They can just go directly. They're going to go to my about, they can download my resume, or if they want to contact me, I set up a little form that they can do that with. Um, also my, my projects that I just have the videos on. And then I just have like little tiles that just link them directly back to the GitHub so they can go check it out if they want. Um, yeah, this is something that I neglected for a while, but I think it's actually really important. If you wanna give yourself the best chance of getting a job, you should have a developer portfolio. Um, I would just recommend using GitHub pages. It's free and very easy to set up. Um, if you Google it, there's, I'm not gonna get into how to do that here because there's tons of videos on YouTube explaining it. But um, yeah, this is pretty much a must in this market. So that's gonna do it for my five mistakes to avoid while searching for your next tech job. I hope you found something of value out of this video today. And if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps the channel. And I would really appreciate it if you did. I know that even if you follow these five tips, it's still gonna be pretty difficult to land that next tech job as the market is pretty bad right now. And um, I know how it feels to be in that position of being let go or laid off or you know graduating college and being nervous about finding a job. It's very scary. So I'm just trying to share my anecdotal experience of what worked for me and hopefully it helps at least one of you guys out here get it your next job because if it does, then I feel like at least I've done my part. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. Stay consistent, don't lose hope, and let me know in the comments what your biggest job search struggle has been. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.